Making simple repairs to your boat's wiring is within anyone's ability. You just need a guide, some basic tools, and a few supplies. Hi there, I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I'll share what we keep on board to do basic electrical work on our boat. And let me tell you, this is one area where having good tools and the right supplies makes a huge difference. Now, the podcast today is sponsored by Seaworthy Goods, creator and manufacturer of Port Visor Rain Shields, which can rain out and let breeze in through your portholes. Life is way too short to be uncomfortable on board, so don't be. Now you can keep your ports open with these easy-to-install and durable visors that don't take any screws, any holes in the boat, anything. Just check out seaworthygoods.com to learn more. And then use coupon code SMARTBOATSTUFF10 for an exclusive 10% off your order. Seaworthy Goods. Smart stuff, smart boats. Okay, let's talk about your boat wiring tools. Wire crimpers, strippers, cutters, connectors, and shrink tubing are essential boat wiring tools. You have to have them on your boat. Simple electrical projects pop up all the time on a boat, whether it's adding or replacing a piece of equipment, removing something, or repairing a broken wire connection. Now, I learned the basic principles of DC wiring. Don't laugh. It was in a fourth grade enrichment class where we wired lights, buzzers, switches, and even electromagnets to six-volt batteries. It gave me a good introduction to circuits, but it didn't teach me much of the nuts and bolts of boat wiring. After trying to make sense of several boat wiring books, I finally found Don Casey's Sailboat Electrics Simplified. Link is in the show notes. That book is the one that keeps things pretty simple and straightforward for a beginner. I highly recommend it as it has gotten me through about 90% of the electrical tasks I've undertaken, and I do do most of the electrical work on our boats. You may need other references, either online or in more advanced books for particular projects, but it is absolutely without a doubt the best starting point there is. You can get it either as a standalone book Or for not a lot more, you can get it as part of Don Casey's Complete Illustrated Sailboats Maintenance Manual, which combines six basic reference books into one. They call it sailboat. Frankly, they're good for powerboats, too. But neither Don Casey nor the other books that I bought talked in detail about choosing and buying the basic boat wiring tools. Now, our first boat came with a complete set of electrical tools, which I used, and I honestly didn't think about whether they were good or bad. I just used them. Our next boat, the one we have now, Barefoot Gap, didn't have any tools aboard when we bought her. I went to Amazon planning to buy the same wiring tools we'd had on KTOL. Interestingly, I discovered they all got pretty poor reviews. I investigated further and then bought a totally different set, spending a little bit more. Not a lot, a little bit. We've owned Barefoot Gal now eight years, and every time I do an electrical project, I make some sort of comment about how much easier it is to do with the better tools. So here's my listing of the current wiring tools and why, in particular, I like each one. Again, you'll find the links to these on Amazon in um, the show notes so that you can go exactly to which one I'm talking about. I believe that they are all still available. They were the last time I checked in preparation for this show. Okay, for a wire stripper. My Nico wire stripper is probably the biggest improvement over tools I used in the past. It perfectly strips the wire away every time, and it works on wire sizes from 10 to 24. And I find that I'm using those thin wires, those 24s, 22s, a lot more as everything's shifting to LEDs. It has absolutely never nicked or broken the wire strands, even in those really tiny wires. It's still doing a great job after eight years, contrary to the cheaper automatic wire stripper that I had on KTOL. And that one I had to replace periodically, about every three years, when it would get too dull to cut cleaning through the wire cover. 
And the other nice thing is that the Nico takes a lot less grip strength than the previous ones. And it's easier to set it to strip exactly the amount needed with measurements written right on the tool. This tool can also cut wire and make crimps, but frankly, I prefer other tools for both of those tasks. I've also used the plier style of a stripper. I had really mediocre results with those, both ragged cuts through the insulation and a lot of nicks and wire strands. They also take a lot more grip strength. If you're only going to upgrade one item, this is the one that I would do. It's Nico N-E-I-K-O, Ultimate Self-Adjusting Wire and Cable Stripper. The next thing is the ratcheting wire crimpers. They make it possible for almost anyone to get a good secure grip. This particular one is simply easier to use than the other ratcheting wire crimpers I've used. First of all, it makes a nice double crimp, which is more secure than a single crimp. And the ratcheting function allows you to put the connector in the crimper, tighten it down slightly so that the connector won't fall out, then slide the wire into the connector, hold the wire with one hand, squeeze the handles together to make the crimp with the other. Ratcheting crimpers should work this way, but not all of them really do. Either not being able to hold the connector without starting the crimp, which makes it impossible to slide the wire in, or requiring considerably more grip strength so that it took two hands for me to make a crimp. And there, again, I didn't have a hand to hold on to the wire. This one is s and Tool Aid Professional Ratcheting Terminal Crimpers. Now, one thing to know about ratcheting crimpers, um, I forgot about this, they're designed so that once they're started, the crimp can't be stopped until complete. In other words, you can't remove the connector and the wire midway through. Sometimes, though, something is screwed up and you need to. Pretty much all ratcheting crimpers have a release lever. Some of them are infinitely easier to operate than the others. The s and Tool Aid one is one of the easier ones, and that's a feature that you really want to have. The next thing is side cutters. They really aren't anything different than what I had on Kate Hall, but I found side cutters, also called wire cutters. Some people call them dykes. They're better for cutting the typical sizes of wire used on a boat than either the wire cutters that are part of the strippers or crimpers or large wire cutters designed for much larger wire. Those have those plays. I just don't like them for the type of projects that we're doing here. A six inch pair of side cutters is the best size. You can find cheap generic ones in most home improvement and hardware stores. Name brand ones tend to have better blades and an easier motion. Still keep plenty of oil right in the mechanism where the, where the two blades come together. It'll help a lot with making it easier. Next item is a butane torch. Marine electrical connections need to be waterproof, and this involves using either shrink wrap connectors or putting shrink wrap over a regular connector. Either way, you're going to need to heat it for it to shrink and make a watertight seal over the wire and the connector. Some people use a simple butane lighter, but I find that using the right tool for this makes the job a lot easier. A true butane torch is much easier to use for other tasks, such as heating seized metal parts to get them apart. That's sort of a little bonus of buying the right tool. The one that I have now is far more adjustable than the first one I have, plus it stays lit. The previous one would go out with even the tiniest puff of wind. The fact that this one stays lit much longer in wind, I should say, is very important to me. Now, the one thing to remember about this one is that when it's set up for hands-free operation, in other words, you actually have to turn it off, not just release the handle. It's called a Stingray Butane Torch. It's on Amazon. Be sure to get a spare pr uh, a butane canister also. Now, the supplies here, you can either buy connectors that have integrated sh heat shrink tubing or separate connectors and rolls of heat shrink. I prefer the separate as you can make the tubing however long you need for a particular project and it's also cheaper. Anchor brand, A-N-C-O-R brand, makes really good marine grade, grade crimp on connectors. Avoid temptation to buy the cheaper ones designed for cars and RVs. They'll corrode in a marine environment much more quickly and you'll have to do all the connections over again. Corrosion also increases the risk of an electrical fire, so it's really a safety item as well. Keep a selection of the red, blue, and yellow connectors. The colors refer to the wire sizes that they are for. 
you want both butt and ring connectors. You may need a few spade connectors and other types. If you're starting from scratch, I have put a good um, 120 pack collection into the show notes. You can then replace them as you use them or add different ones as the need arises. My collection now is, is pretty varied and pretty wide. Another thing you need is the heat shrink tubing. The anchor tubing that is designed for a marine environment is really worth it. There are a couple other brands um, that have recently come on the market that are designed for marine, and you can get them in like 50 foot lengths. I tend to buy the anchor just because I know it really works. I use a lot of the quarter inch tubing, but I use enough of other sizes that I do keep everything on hand. For most applications, you can cut one of these six inch pieces in two, three inches each works really well. Again, links for that are all in the show notes. I have a lot of other electrical tools and supplies, things like a multimeter, fuses, wire brushes, wire cutters, and so on. But if you're just getting started, what I've listed here are going to give you a good basic kit, and then you can add various items as you need them. Final note, if you're doing anything with really large cable, like battery cable, most brick and mortar marine stores, such as a like a local West Marine, have a work table with large cable cutters and crimpers so that you don't have to buy them for a one-time use. Unfortunately, you can't usually borrow them to take them back to the boat. You have to use them in the shop. That's it for this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast. I hope that it gives you a really good starting point on all of your electrical projects. It's what we do an awful lot of on the boat over and over again, and knowing how to do your own and knowing that you have good tools makes it so much easier. I hope you've uh, signed up, subscribed to the podcast so that you'll get all of our episodes and tell your friends if you think this was helpful. (music) 